Here we are. Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? Welcome to another Project Healing Waters extravaganza. Uh, I don't know. We do this every week. Uh, 6 o'clock to about 8 o'clock-ish. Um, sometimes I get a little fatigued towards the end and uh, we have to call her quits or something jumps up. But we try to do this each and every week, every Wednesday, rain or shine, um, in support of the St. Cloud program of the Project Healing Waters Fly Fishing. Awesome little program supporting veterans through uh, the world of fly fishing. Um, and ever since uh, almost a year ago, we've been doing these live streams in lieu of face-to-face uh, -face meeting. I've been pulling up my, my monitor here. Um, it's a matter of carriages and horses and things like that can't check the monitor until the live stream is going and let's go ahead check give it a few minutes let our people stroll on in good evening James how are you doing how you holding up there in the Berber it's cold out there man it's crazy how how warm how warm nine degrees can feel I mean, it's just been absolutely smacky on the face. You know, I haven't even... It, when you take care of your trash, you just chuck it in the garage. You don't even have to do anything with it because 20 minutes into being in the garage, it's it's everything is frozen. Um, at one point, it was like 50-some degrees warmer in our refrigerator than it was outside. <laughs> so... I don't know. Uh, tonight we're going to be tying uh, the shipman's buzzer or some variations thereof. Um, and it's pretty cool where I, I originally came across this pattern. This I, I originally first tied this in my uh, A to Z series. There's a, uh, a series here. Uh, kind of white out, blowed out. But anyways, I tied a, a series of flies out of this uh, this book here. It's a uh, the Flu Monster Lake Skoksken. I don't know. It's all in uh, Norwegian. Um, and I picked a letter, or I picked a fly out of each um, section of this book. And it's laid out, the book is laid out alphabetically. So it's not like streamers are here and dry flies are here and this is here, that is there. It's uh, it's laid out alphabetically. And I tied the shipman's buzzer and um, I can't really do it because I got the phone hooked up. But I take my phone and uh, Google Translate uh, has a, a live feature so I could uh, take the camera, hold it over the, the text, and it would translate um, into uh, English so I could understand. And I did that for this whole book. And after a while, you, you kind of, I don't know, it's been a while since I've picked it up, but I don't know, for a while I could I could pick up, uh, you know, you start to learn the, the hook, the hail, crop, you know, it's just like, what what's this, what's that? Um, but, yeah, imagination is your only limitation. All right, we got a couple more in the chat. Dave Lee, good evening, Dave. How are you doing? I'm, you know... Man, this spring we are going to be hitting this Mississippi um, hard. I am anxious. Uh, hopefully, well, not hopefully, but um, yeah, hopefully by the time it comes, um, I'll be ready to to paddle paddle down. Seventy three, and the fish are biting down in Florida. Outstanding. You were catching what sea trout? Uh oh, splashing my coffee everywhere. This is a heavy mug. It, the, the mug itself weighs probably a pound and a half. But anyways, let's uh, let's quit the BS and and uh, get the tie-ins. So I've tied this, I don't know, probably a year, year and a half ago. And like with all flies that we tie, um, and all flies that I tie, you know, I might have tied it one way, uh way back when and 
I might tie it a, a slightly different way um, a different time. If you know what I mean. We, we always we're always uh, ever evolving and changing our styles and we have access to different tools and materials and you know after a while you just kind of slide into rhythms of things and things like that there so um, we're gonna replicate this the best we can and we're gonna come up with uh, we're gonna kind of dive down the rabbit hole of variations like I like to do um, but the at least the one in the book the picture in the book um, is a red one so we're gonna tie another red one at least to start off All right, we're going to be using um, wet fly hooks. These are kind of like a nymph hook, uh, just a little heavier gauge wire. Um, you, you want these to go slightly subsurface. Um, you know, you're not fishing these on necessarily the bottom. They're a buzzer. They're an emerger style pattern. So these are uh, size 14 wet flies using Moonlit ML 053s tonight. And for this red one, not much of a choice. I got this red thread right sitting right here. Uh, let's see, it's a little bit smaller than what we're going to probably use for the other colors, but it's what we got. It's a 12 watt, bum bum bum, and the color is out of red. So we'll start our thread up front and work our way back, make a little. Th oh, I, can, I need to move that pair of scissors. So it's not my primary scissors, and if I leave it sit where it is, I'm going to grab at it a thousand times over. Okay, so look at this. We're almost towards the bottom of this bag. Uh, we're going to be using some pair of post wings. Now, uh, Davy McPhail uh, has a really good video on some uh, shipments buzzer buzzers um, plural. You know, and he kind of did the, did the same thing we're going to do tonight, and that's just go down the rabbit hole of uh, different different styles. You know, it's kind of like the woolly bugger or whatever. There's a lot of different variations we can tie to this. So, you know, I'm just going to take the full full shuck here, and I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room up front, and I'm going to leave myself just a little bit. Right there. We're going to trim that down to length here in a minute, but we're not there yet. I'll just work this all the way back. Right to the bend. And we can trim that a little bit shorter to length here in just a minute too. Um, and with this red one, I have some red seal. This is some old, old stuff. I guess it says seal. Got an olive green and a red. So um, first things first, we're gonna wax our line a little bit. Oh wait, before we do our dubbing, we gotta tie in our ribbing. I got a tendency to get a little excited. I'm gonna bump my thread forward a little bit. And I'm going to be using a pearl tinsel. This is, my, I don't know if it's a small or extra small. That's the smallest I have. Um, didn't come with any labels on it. So on my side of my spools, I have it labeled as a, oh, a single dot, a two dot, and a three dot. Just so I <clears throat> have something to reference um, as, a, as a visual reference. So... You know, that's something to think about uh, you know if you can't necessarily get something labeled come up with a labeling system that at least hopefully at least you'll remember and recognize so you know one splotch on there that tells me that's my smallest of my three and it's kind of easy to tell when they're all all spools are sitting next to each other but let's go ahead and tie this in And we'll work that on the side all the way to the rear. Perfecto. All right. 
You know what, in fact, I want to do a full wrap underneath. Maybe we'll do another one. And then just kind of pull, pull that forward. Kind of help keep that shuck up and off of the back, back a little bit. Good evening, Mr. Anderson. Thanks for tuning in. Working on some, uh oh, we did the twist. We'll give that the untwist here in just a moment. Bingo. Okay. Now let's go ahead and add a little dubbing wax. A little low tack wax for a high tack job. No, not really. All right. What do we know about dubbing? Say it with me now. Less is more, more or less. So we're just gonna take a small little, small little pinch. And we're gonna pinch this on nice and tight, nice tight dubbing noodle. And again, for this one, I'm using a red seal fur. All right, once our dubbing makes contact, we can run that to the back. And then we'll just do a nice even body working our way up from the rear to the front. Perfect. I'm going to actually park my thread right in front of uh, that front shuck. We'll do our ribbing as a counter ribbing. So we'll do this the opposite direction. And if you don't have any of this pearl tinsel, you could get away with using um, just some flashaboo, or you could also get away with using um, some tippet. I think that's what I used in my original. It was just a little bit of mono. And what better to use than just a little bit of tippet. All right, fold that back, give it a couple more locking wraps, and we'll just head into the whip finish zone. Right in front. All right, we're gonna trim this down. This is kinda like the gills or something like that. The merger gills. All right, and just a slight brush on the dubbing. Not necessarily Velcro, but a little soft brush action. I'm gonna pick anything out. In fact, let's see what Mr. Bodkin has to say. Don't pick at it too much, because then you might risk popping your your tinsel. Tinsel makes uh, a decent ribbing, but it's not not foolproof. So. What do we got here? We got Noah. Good evening, Noah. How have I been? I have been great. How have you been? We've been keeping the grind going one day at a time. So that's kind of test run number one of the old uh, shipman's buzzer. I got to put a couple of these other flies away real quick to make room. So Mondays we do our live streams here and it's kind of a Tenkara style feel theme to it. Um, and I got a cork here with some projects from Monday that I need to clear off and put into the old Tenkara fly box. Because 
on Mondays, what I like to do is not necessarily follow a, a specific pattern like this here tonight. This is the shipment's buzzer, and uh, you know it's an established pattern. It's been around since uh, the 80s uh, by I believe Don or da Don or Dan Shipman. Uh, that's who who this is named after. But you know here's some of the Monday's activities. We just kind of let the imagination flow and it is just so much fun actually here here's something that kind of tied like a shipman's buzzer it's kind of experimenting so <clears throat> let's tie a couple more red because um, we know that's a it's a very good um, well established we notice works kind of color scheme a little red and white That's what it looks like up super up close. You know what? I'm going to add just a little dab, a little dab of glue, a little, little drop of head cement, a um, little bit of insurance policy, if you will. And we'll just one little drop underneath. Right onto the thread. Keep it out of the eye and you'll be a okay. So that's a red and white shipman's buzzer. Um, let's try another one. All right, from the top, because we got some just joining us. Oh, yeah, the brush is very familiar. <laughs> In the vise. Size 14. Tonight I'm using Moonlit's ML053s. Just kind of a standard wet fly hook. Nothing super super duper about it. Alright. I'm using a 12 watt Vivas. Mm. Vivas. We'll start her up front. And we'll go ahead and trim that off. We're going to get going on some different colors here in a minute, but for meow, we're going to stick with this red. We'll do one more red, and then I'll, maybe we'll do one of that olive. And then we'll switch to some different color combinations, because I actually have some, um, some other colors. Well, all sorts of dubbing we could use. So this is just a uh, pair of post. Where'd my bag for that go? Here we go. Pair of post wings. Um, you know, it comes in different bags. But let's go ahead and get this in here. Oh, I need to bump my thread back just a little bit. And lift and lower. Leave yourself enough up front to work with. There's no sense of fighting it too much. And this time I'm going to take a wrap or two back here. Right out of the get-go. Right out of the gate. Pull forward a little bit with that. All right, trim that off and we'll slimmer down here in a minute. We'll run our thread forward a wee little bit and we'll get our pearl tinsel. Again, I don't remember if this is a small or extra small, but it's the smallest I have. So for me, it's not whether it's the small or extra small, it's my smallest. Things are always relative. All right, let's go ahead and add a little touch of wax. This is just some simple low-tack, Dub and wax. 
hold on to your horses, we're doing this in 3D. I know, it's way overkill. But I can only imagine the the visual. Uh, question is, is could you use Antron yarn? I suppose you could. Um, the Parapost is a uh, water shedding, water repellent uh, type of material. And I believe an Antron will, will behave just the same. What it's trying to do under the water is um, ideally the fly will slowly sink and hover just below the surface and these little shucks at the end will uh, hold little pockets of almost little bubbles of air um, or, or give the, the illusion of something like that I believe um, that's that's that answer is uh, uh, to my understanding um, I'm not going to preach that as the gospel um, I would defer to um, the oracle about that but good question I in a pinch absolutely I think I would use um, an Antron we could you know in fact you know it's it's not just the fact that it's a uh, you know it's Antron uh, like I said uh, check out Davy McPhail's uh, shipman's buzzers kind of does the same thing we're going to do here tonight and he ties all sorts of a few different variations with some different materials um but you know like just this first one this first batch we're using a uh, pair post wing um you know imagination is your only limitation i would be the last person in the world to tell you that you cannot do something all right, let's go ahead and get our, and our dubbing is a red, it's a red seal fur. I mean, man, that is R-E-D red. Do a nice little even body right up front. And we'll park our thread right up front there. I mean, I've got, I mean, I keep my, my Antron I mean, I guess it, it's Antron. I guess is kind of like the the crescent wrench is would be like the actual brand brand name of it, Antron. Um, and it's like Antron. I believe is like uh, Blue Ribbon Fly invented that or something. Or you know, it's just it's all basically. I'm not gonna say it's all the same stuff because it's not. It's close. It's kind of the same flavor, but I mean, you get down to the molecular, you know, Zelon. Oh yeah, it's Zelon. I'm thinking of. Uh, you know, it's like Zelon, Antron, whatever this is made out of. It's all, you know, in the same family of plastics that came out of the '60s and '70s and '80s, and it's just. Somewhere along the line, a, a fly tire, an angler, came across it, and tied it in, and said, Aha! That, my friend, is a golden ticket. That works really well. And then, next thing you know, we're sold little baggies of stuff that they call Parapost Wings, comma, white, for $2.45. So, I don't know. You go you tell me. What do you think? What are your guys' thoughts on materials and plastics and antrons and zelons and I don't know. Pretty crazy. Pretty darn crazy. Uh, let's add a little dab of glue us, a little bit of insurance policy underneath. Before we go too far and we can trim those shucks back just a little bit. Because right now they seem a little bit of a whole bunch of stuff. A little bit of Sally Hansen's right? a little touch on that thread. And you know where that's going? Nowhere. That's where. Alright. So let's go ahead and trim this down. Ah. 
how big is that? I don't know, probably maybe a hook scap. Slightly less. Maybe. Alright, then we'll just see what our brush does here. Not too much. Let's go with Mr. Bodkin. See if we can't pick some of this out just a little bit. Because I'm going for the buggy look. We want, want it to look a little scraggly. Maybe that front one I tied trim just a little bit too short. We'll be alright. Yo Shipman's buzzer. Alright, we got small four RT mouth in the house. Good evening, hi folks. Thanks for tuning in. So there is red. Pair of shipman's buzzers. Arr. All right, so we got this uh, olive seal for right here next to us. Let's give that a try. I'm gonna switch threads. We're gonna switch to my olive thread, which is actually a size bigger with a ten knot. So we just have to remember not to go bananas. I need to find a better spot for this. See, that actually works out pretty good. Here we go. All right. From the top, you know what? I need to take a quick I'm gonna spin around here for a minute. We're gonna do a quick pause for the cause. I just want to spin around and say hi to folks because we got 11 of us watching. We cranked out two here in the first few minutes. Um, we're going to switch colors. Um, I don't know. I think sometimes I just get in the roll of it and, you know, my coffee gets cold and I just jibber jabber the whole time. So Ben is in the house. Good evening, Ben. How is it going? How are you guys doing? Let's... Let's say hi. Let's have a quick quick sip of coffee. Uh, I got my lava lamp going. Uh, found that buried away. Unearthed it. Um, it is a bona fide vintage lava lamp all the way from the 1990s. Ooh, not quite the 60s, but it's a 90s lava lamp. I was sitting there thinking, like, man, I probably picked that up at, like, Spencer's Gifts or something in the Lansing Mall. Whoa! Um, shipments buzzers, I like it. Um, you know, it's a very simple pattern to tie. We can go bananas with it, which we are going to go bananas with it. Yeah, I love this mug. It's got a big old trout on it. It's it's heavy. It's awesome though. Webster. Ah. Uh, anyways, Pete. Good evening. How are you? All is good. Good, good, good. Well, I don't know. Sounded like a good idea to spin around and talk to the camera, but... Eh. I don't know. We like... We like we're here to tie flies. Let's go, <laughs> let's go ahead and spin back around and do that. Um, so Dave says, real quick, uh, I believe Antron is the material used in carpet. You know, I believe that. I'd buy that. You know, it's like I've got stuff that's labeled as shuck yarn. We've got ice fur. You know, whatever. This is almost like a, looks like an ice fur. Here's some um, crinkled zelon. And then I got all sorts of different 
crazy fly tires dungeon um, ET float fibers. Maybe maybe we should do maybe something with the glow in the dark. I don't know. Crinkle hair. But it's a matter of experimenting, you know, like always, like I always say. Imagination is your only limitation. Um, ooh, maybe that's something we can tie next week. Um, in the comments, in the comments, after this, after this live stream becomes a video or sometime in the next week or whatever, don't, don't throw me a list right now because I won't be able to keep track of it, but afterwards... Because there's a difference between chat, which is what's going on right now, and comments, which happen after the fact. But we got 12 of us watching thereabouts. I want everybody to come back later between now and next week and give me some household items that I might be able to tie a fly with. Antron from a piece of carpet. Um, you know, we've got a mop fly. We have did mop flies, what, a couple weeks ago? Um, not that long ago, but, you know, a mop fly would be a, a for instance. Um, so, so some some things that, that you have, that you find around your house that you might want to try to tie a fly with, go ahead and try to tie a fly with. Let me know in the comments. Uh, we, we might, I might, I might have some here at my house. And if I can find it in my house, then... Um, it's it's on. We're gonna try some homemade homemade materials next week. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, and since you asked about the the fibers, it all comes from the saline ropes, polypropylene. Yeah, yeah, the old polypro ropes. It's amazing how much stuff has evolved from the nautical world. I come from a background of technical theater. And, you know, 90% of your theater and entertainment and stuff like that almost comes directly from nautical terms and nautical practices. Pretty cool stuff. All right, let's, let's finish tying some flies. I'm going to spin around. Take, take a sip of the coffee. All right, we're going to switch to the olive, but we're going to stick with the same size 14 hook. All right, here it is. It's a size 14. These are moonlets made by Moonlit ML053s, 14s. We're going to use our olive thread this time. This is just a size bigger than the red that I have. But I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. There's two schools of thoughts. Some will say use the biggest thread you can use without building up too much bulk. That way you have as much security and this and that as possible. And the other school of thought is use the smallest thread you can get away without it you know, snapping and breaking every time all right pair of post wing materials let's go ahead and try this oh let's go ahead and move our thread forward just a little bit more what I'm doing is I'm going underneath and then you can lift I'm exaggerating it here and then lower it and we're parked on top I'm going to cinch you down just a little bit. Work our way to the rear, keeping it towards the top. And let's go ahead and take a wrap or two towards the back. And when I go forward, I give it a little tug, and that cinches the thread kind of up and under that butt a little bit. All right, we need our tinsel. Again, I'm using a, you know, a pearl, pearl tinsel. 
you could use a flash of blue or like I said some mono or some tippet material you know just keep it relative to itself as far as size proportions that's kinda kinda the only rule that I really subscribe to in the world of fly tying I think for the most part is you know keep thing keeping keeping your flies proportionate to itself and and by that I mean proportionate to the hook um, in a general sense you know sometimes you might want to go just a little bit bigger sometimes you might want to just tuck it a little little bit smaller but you know we know your eye will tell you you know if things are looking uh, proportionate or not in fact what I did a way while back um, I didn't do anything with it. I was going to post pictures on online and stuff like that. But what I did is I took the the Fibonacci spiral, the the oh I'm drawing a blank. The Fibonacci. Fib, I think I'm saying that right. The Fibonacci sequence. Where everything just you know slowly gets smaller and smaller and smaller, almost like a fractal, kind of like a fractal, or maybe it is the basis of a fractal. But um, anyways, I started laying that over some photographs of some flies that I previously tied, and you start looking at it, um, you know the wings on it and the tails and uh, the hackle size of the hackle, and you start looking at it and yeah, everything just. If you're doing good, everything just kind of lines itself up. All right, so this is some olive, olive dyed seal fur. Let's give this a try. A little dabble dubbus. What do you know? Less is more. Okay, nice tight noodle. Nice tight dubby noodle. We like that. Looks like a little bit of red got into the mix, but I think that'll be all right. There we go. We'll park it right in front of that shuck. Just bring her ribbing forward, reverse direction, counter wraps. tight locking wraps and then we're on to the world of the whip finish there we go I like this olive I like this is just just the right amount of scraggliness on this too I love it a uh, little dab of insurance policy underneath. Yeah, that sounds like an idea. Let me know in the comments, not right now, but after this video, but in this video, or when this live stream becomes a video, if I'm explaining that right. Some household items to incorporate into a fly that I might have around the house. Um, and if I use your material, then you can consider yourself a winner. What that means, who knows. I don't have any prizes to give away. There we go. I like
like that olive. Give it a quick little brush. And if we want, we could pick it out a little bit with the old Mr. Bodkin. There we go. Oh, yeah. Get right in between that. So, you know, bona fide trout pattern, but I guarantee you we're going to have some uh we're going to have some uh, panfish smashing this. Actually, I'll throw this out of my secret practice lake and I'll still catch a trout. I like that olive. What do you think? So far, what's your favorite, olive or red? Here we go. So you're not a native speaker. It's okay. It's okay. I speak English and I still can't speak English. But I do understand science. 1-1, one, one, three, two, five, eight. Yep, and so on. It's pretty much fractals. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's what we're after. We're after um, replicating things in nature. And it's where we have to draw our inspiration from. You know, we can let our imagination run wild, um, but if we draw our inspiration direct from nature and kind of stick to that theory of, well, I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, big bait catches big fish, right? Well, you yourself can only eat so much, right? It's you sit there and you think of a of a of a cheeseburger. And you're like, man, that's a good-looking cheeseburger, and you want to go just smash that. But you know, under a normal diet and normal circumstances, if you see a plate of cheeseburgers, you're not going to necessarily just go smash it. I don't know. Size 14 hook, once again, these are moonlit, I don't know what they are, they're ML053s. I keep the box around so I can, I can remember what I'm using. It's partially why I like doing the live streams and just uh, having a YouTube channel in general. What I really enjoy is being able to go back into the archives, go deep. And see what the heck I was tying, how I tied it, what materials I used, etc., etc. All right. Take our parapost wing material, work that front to rear, right to the bend. Keep it on top. That'll kind of help, help the whole thing fish and deploy balanced. Tinsel, little pearl, pearl tinsel. Sounds like a a horse, a horse's name, pearl tinsel. I like that. Um, so when I do my dubbing like this, you know, you notice I don't have my thread all the way at the rear of the hook because I know once I get my dubbing noodle, you know, assembled up here, it's going to take me a thread wrap or two or three or four or whatever it takes me to get 
um, from the dubbing to the material or to the shank and I would rather build up my bulk in the middle of the fly give myself a half of a chance to not build up too much bulk at the further most rear section all right little dab of dub less is more more or less I'm using this time this is that same same olive and it's in the same bag as this red. So I just really haven't wanted to, to mess with it too much. But So there is a red fiber or two in the lot. We'll make our nice tight dubbing noodle. And as we work back, we kind of make contact with the dubbing. Bada boom, bada bing. Let's go right in front. All right, we'll do our ribbing. Opposite direction as our dubbing. here. Is that true or is that just an illusion? That's just an illusion. Looks like some of the dubbing is just around the eye. We can work with that. But in a general sense it's all clear. We like that. Keep your eyes clear and you'll always be able to fish the fly. Got to get right in between the ribs. Get what you want and pluck her out. We're looking for kind of buggy on this. There we go. I like it. I really like the olive. Olive and red. I like those two colors. Just add water, right? Mm. Just add water. Boy, we are just smashing through these so quick, too. All right, let's venture away from our seal, because I don't have much of that. And I like, I like to use materials, but I don't necessarily want to use all of it. Ooh. Let's do a little bit of that. <clears throat> we'll do a couple in that. And then we'll see about switching to some other stuff. So I got one last little one last little patch of seal that we can use.
Moonlit ML053, size 14s. It's kind of a standard butt fly hook. I'm going to switch to a kind of a... It's going to be like a creamy, whitish, yellowish... You'll see when we get to the... When we get to the dub. Alright, take a... Piece of pair of post wing material. We'll set that right up there. Just a pearl. This stuff is so pretty. <laughs> Ooh. Also, um, Sulky's Hollow Shimmer, if I have some of that handy around. Might be able to use something like that, too. wax so on a scale from 0 to 10 10 being awesome 1 being really crappy um, how is the video quality coming across you know I'm using a really small monitor and it just might be because I've got so much uh, stuff happening. My Wi-Fi might be a little bogged down. Um, but let me know how the video quality is coming across. We aim to please. Alright, look at this. This is just kind of a cream, kind of a creamy, yellowish, whitish. Just a little dabble dub us. Come on. Go a little bit tighter on that, I suppose. There we go. Boy, oh boy, that's a really nice, really nice. And down it goes all the way to the floor. Let's give ourselves a little bit more and we'll roll right into whip finish. Boy, oh boy, I like this cream. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for this cream. I want to be able to pick just a little bit out. Yeah, buddy. Oh, 
All right. Video quality is 720-ish. Okay. Much appreciated. I wonder what our broadcasts. We're at 30 frames per second. Do 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 do. Doesn't let me know much more beyond that. I don't know. But we're doing the best we can with what we got. That's all that matters. Like that white creme olive red. Oh boy, oh boy. Let's do maybe one more. One more of this cream. And then we'll switch switch out of the realm of the seals and get into some other stuff. So you know, like I said, we can use all sorts of stuff when we Go to make these. Imagination is your only limitation. But it's always best to tie at least a couple of any particular fly, I suppose. That way, when you lose it, or your best friend loses it, or you forget it, it's always good to have a couple. All right, got this little piece of shuck yarn in here. Or not shuck yarn, um, pair post, pair post. Keep those pointed up a little bit. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I forgot the tinsel. The tinsel went to the ground. and tight. Alright, let's take it to the rear. Work our way forward. With enough practice, you'll get to the point where you typically just throw your uh, 
probably your, uh, just the right amount of dubbing on your dubbing noodle. Um, you know, it's better to possibly just add a little bit more when needed, or, you know, I suppose it's, you know, just as easy to take a little, little pinch off if you get too much on there. But, a little dabble dub ya. Always remember, less is more. More or less. Going right in with the whip finish. Bada boom, bada bang. Yeah, I think we're going to be catching some fish with that. Hey, Dave, good evening. Yeah, the tan is definitely a full throttle kind of fly. Uh, we'll get the shaky, get the shakies out. I mean, holy smokus. We didn't pick that last one out at all. Just give me a little bit. Give me a little bit. There we go. I like it. We're back in action. Here we go. I think these are turning out just A-OK -okay if you ask me. Just sailing right along. What are we? Hour and five minutes. We got three, six, seven flies in. All right. Let's have some fun now. Let's see. I'm going to put this seal away. I don't want a loose seal. Where's my uh, arrested development fans? Got some loose seal number one, loose seal number two. That was a loose seal with a yellow bow tie. Swim in the bay. <laughs> All right, let's see. What else could we throw on there? Let's do. I don't know. How's this look? Oh, I know what I saw. I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. We're gonna try gonna try some of this rabbit bright. Cause it's actually all natural bright yellow rabbit. With some flashaboo. <laughs> some fine, fine flashaboo tucked in there. Hey Steve, good evening. Thanks for uh thanks for tuning in. Did I say hi to you already? I don't know. I just keep turning around from time to time to make sure I'm seeing what I'm seeing. Alright, we'll stick with the white thread. With this yellow. Actually, no, we already got 
Got that tan. I don't know. We'll try one or two of these. And then we'll see what happens. Size 14, you see. Moonlets. I got a good deal on this little hook box at one point, and I just loaded it up. A white ten out thread, and we are on to a new sprig. Some pair of post wings. Look at that. This is this is the end of that bag. Holy smokes! I don't know, sometimes, call me crazy, but sometimes I feel a small sense of accomplishment when I go through a bag. Um, what was in that package? What package? Oh. Rabbit Bright. This is going to be our next dubbing. We'll get to it here in a minute. It's got a red X on it. Don't know why, but this is the last little bit of this bag. Fear not. I've got all sorts of pair of post wing material. Could use little bits of foam, uh, CDC, not C, yeah, CDC fibers. Um, you know, whatever you whatever you really want to feel like you can get away with, really, I suppose. Leave ourselves plenty. We can always trim that down a little bit, a little bit more. I said I was going to possibly switch it up a little bit. So this is... I've got some hollow. Some Sulky's hollow shimmer. Actually, you know what? I'm actually... I can't find... This is a gold sparkly holographic. But it's actually not, not in there, which tells me I'm missing something somewhere. But I got this kind of re-spooled. It's about the same size as that small tinsel. It might just disappear in the uh, in the dubbing, but we'll give this one a try. I like trying new things. All right, this is that rabbit bright. Just a little dab. A little dab will dub us. We'll see how this looks. It's not going to be as scraggly as the seal, but we shall see. In fact, this goes on pretty fine. It's almost, almost going on like a super fine. We shall see. Once we start picking it out. We're gonna add just a little touch more. We shorted ourselves just a little bit. There we go. We wanna get all the way up front. Yeah, I like this. So this hollow shimmer, I picked it up at uh, Joanne Fabrics. And don't tell them I said this, but never shop at Joanne Fabrics unless 
he got the 40% off coupon. How do you get said coupon? I don't know, just wait. <laughs> it shows up in the mail like clockwork. I don't know, I haven't gotten coupons or junk in the mail recently, it seems like. Either that or I just stopped paying attention. But again, you know, it's just like everything else in the world of fly tying. In most cases, everything you get is a lifetime supply. I'm going to pick this up first. I want to trim. I think that's fair. It's a little bit tighter. I guess we could have done one more wrap up front, but... Yeah. That one just laid out a little bit too flat. Compared so you can see the bugginess in the hairs versus the seal. Big difference. I really like that seal. Not a fan of the rainbow or rabbit bright here not for this pattern we're looking for stuff that's got some scraggliness to it is what we're after and let's try some of this I did use this earlier with some other patterns this is that labeled as a leech dub but let's give this a try what color do we want to try we got all the colors out right now let's do this kind of a copper orange for that let's switch to our olive thread Change, quick change to the olive thread. Tenant. The good old Tenno. I guess ten out is a lot easier than saying zero 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 zero. What do you think? Alright, let's go back to our pearl tinsel. I like that yellow, but just wasn't too thrilled about it. But we tried it. We would have never known if we hadn't tried. And I forgot to trim off the back of the shuck yarn. Well, I suppose we could just leave it hanging out. Let it hang out for now. There's really no sense of really trimming it. Um, hey Steve, thanks for uh, swinging through. Have yourself a uh, wonderful uh, rest of your week. Seventeenth. Wow. So in exactly two months. Let's see, February, March, April. Yep, April. April seventeen. 
We gotta celebrate my birthday. Alright, so this is some buggier stuff. Let's give this a try. A little dabble W. Less is more, more or less. We'll do a nice little tight noodle. It's almost kind of like a with the olive in there it's almost kind of to me it gives me a feel of like a caramel apple when I'm looking at this super super close it's kind of got that red it's got that copperish caramelish yummiest nummiest as long as we just don't trap that down we're good to go and we'll just make sure our ribbing is just nice and even lock that down oh. while well, nobody's talking to you So weird. A little glitch in the matrix. So the other day, last night, I pulled out some classics. Um, you know, if you're if you're if you're some of my people from my generation of being deployed to Iraq or Afghanistan, the odds are you probably have a significant DVD collection, bootlegs. Um, and last night I watched Fight Club on some of my, off of one of my bootleg DVDs. Um, and what's crazy about them is they're they're usually themed like like I got all the police academies on one DVD. Now the quality on these aren't the greatest, but the price was right. I think it was like five. Depending on how many you bought, you know, the more you buy, the more you buy, the more you can haggle and save. Um, kind of don't like that little blowout we're having there. Maybe we can just hit it with a piece of Velcro. A little stickier on that brush. But anyways, I mean, the, the DVDs are just absolutely amazing because it's just like I paid virtually nothing for them. I think it was like five, ten bucks a piece. I think I was paid five for most of those DVDs. And then um, I got the first first three seasons of Sanford and Son. Busted that out last night. That was a that was a fun one. Here we go. I just don't want any one little chunk sticking out, but I think I could roll with that copper. That copper brown. That's got enough buggy to it. See that yellow? It just was not not singing not singing my song. But that is that's pretty sweet. I like that. We'll do a couple more with this color. My cork is starting to fill up. Which is good. Let's go ahead and get this going. 
Size 14s we're sticking with tonight. This is that olive tenant thread. With some good old para, para post wing material. Six hours ahead. Well, that means it'll be. Uh, we'll have a good knee. Good evening. That's almost tomorrow. It's almost tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Again, uh, be sure to uh, hit me up in the comments um, on this video when it becomes a video uh, sometime later on, and let me know what kind of household item you want me to try to scavenger hunt around my house of stuff to try to tie tie a fly with next week we'll see what we can my hope is is I get some comments and then I got some things to look or look for around the house or something easily relatively easily sourced won't be able to go crazy and then we'll see what we come up with I think that'll be a fun fun little adventure yeah we'll just leave that last shuck that back end then when we cut it, it will be right at the proper length. Minimizing waste. We like doing that. What's that? Minimize waste. Because the frugal fly tire is seldomly bored. There's always stuff to tie. There's always stuff to tie on. You can always find a fly you don't like and... Strip it back down. Disassemble a fly. Have you ever disassembled a fly? Just to see its construction? I mean, yeah, we have all have had a fly come disassembled on us at one point, I'm sure. Come undone for one fashion or another. It's because the fish are just absolutely loving it. Um, but to actually disassemble to dissect a fly to see what makes it tick on the inside what makes that fly so special or just salvaging and scrapping um, a hook that's a good reason to recycle a hook and true fact the harder it is for you to untie your fly the better you did tying it to begin with you know, obviously, if you just take a razor blade to it, and you got a good, good enough razor blade, and it takes it right to the shank and just cleans everything right off, then you know you're looking for nice tight thread wraps and everything to be nice, clean and compact. Um, but I would actually encourage that after you've got a few flies under your belt, if you're a beginner, um, cut one up, see how well you did. Because if your only test, which is the one that only really matters, is, you know, if you're catching fish with it, who who cares really what it looks like or how it's tied or anything like that. But, you know, there's also a point where, I don't know, the fish will laugh at you if you got, a, if you got the right fly out there. I, I reminded by that all the time I got the little comic strip right next to me. It says, you call this a woolly bugger? I could tie a better fly with that with a fin behind tied my behind my back. I only bit that to uh, <laughs> hide your, your pathetic display of ignorance. I love it. Tickle, tickle. Yeah, that kind of really helps. 
Let's get that picked out. All right. All right, James, you're out of here, too. Have a good evening. Appreciate each and everybody for swinging by, whether you're here for the whole live stream or just a couple of minutes. There's a whole world of things going on out there, and I appreciate and recognize the fact you take the time out of your busy evenings and schedules to join me as we tie some flies. that well, that red and that orange just kind of fade right into each other almost all right let's do let's do a hot and wild one um, I like the way this uh, leech dubbing is behaving, so I need to do a quick bobbin change. Get this purple thread in. We're going to do a hot and wild, hot and wild colored one. But this purple thread is definitely not ready to go yet. on. Alright, we're going to do one with this, uh, with the same white pair of post. And then we're going to do one. I got some hot pink. But we're going to start off with this, uh, consistent at least one more with a round of consistency and this is just the same uh, Viv Vivas um, Tenot but this is purple I like purple flies very royal Right there to the bend. We'll take a couple of turns. All right, pearl tinsel time. It's tinsel time. Get a little bite on it and wrap it towards the rear. Alright, who's ready for this? This is just some purple pop. Purple pop. Yes, sir. This has got some purple to it. And it is going to pop, pop, pop. That's way too much dubbing. Practice what you preach, A.A. Ron. Less is more. We notice. Nice little tight dubbing noodle. All
I like it, the purples. Boy, oh boy, I like that purple. I like that purple. Boy, my little quirk is getting... getting full tonight. Just going bananas. We'll do one more purple one. I'm going to do one more with the white shuck, and then I'm going to do maybe one with the pink. Just that way I have a pair of each. Sticking with those 14s, and there's our 10 at purple. New color, I believe the purple is. A new color available. Here we go. Oh, there it goes. I felt it. I felt it catch the tip of that hook. Quick, fast, and in a hurry it did. the first time that's ever happened to me tonight. Keyword being tonight. But it's just super quick to rethread. Cause it's not about if it happens, it's when it happens and how well are you gonna respond to it? No sense crying over snapped thread. I'll we'll just bring it back. Bring it back. All right, rib, rib, rib.
So how much, well, there's about four or five of us watching left still, just to keep conversation going. How many hours a week do you spend tying flies, would you say? Or you're less than? Just tie a little bit every other week, or do you tie it? Because, I mean, me, it's easy for me to do the math, because I got a two-hour live stream here, and then we got a hour live stream on Mondays, and then we got a couple of flies in between, more for, like, R&D. But for the bulk, the bulk of my fly tying is typically always in front of a camera nowadays. Not always, but in a general sense, we like to live stream. I, lo I just love sharing uh, what we do here as fly tires. Little dabble dub. Not much, folks. Not much. Less is more, more or less. So I would say on a weekly basis, I probably tie flies anywhere from three at a minimum. Three to four hours every week tying flies. And that's just fine, fine with me. Because for me, fly tying has always been partially therapy for me. And that's why. I've continued to live stream for so long with Project Healing Waters and kept my involvement going with Project Healing Waters after all these years because I understand, I don't understand why, not even fully understand, but I don't know, fly fishing, fly tying, it just, if you have a rushed mind, it's a way to slow everything down. And having this weekly regiment, you know, of tying flies every Wednesday night and every Monday morning, you know, it's like Wednesday nights, it's just kind of check in with kind of the larger group, the people I miss of Project Healing Waters, St. Cloud Program, and Monday mornings, it's just a great way to start the week off, I think, then, I mean, time flies, you know, as we get into, back into summertime, I'll be out on with my kayak, my new kayak, man, I'm so excited for that. Never owned a kayak, I've never been a kayaker, but at one point I never rode a bicycle too, but I got a bicycle now. Yeah, I mean, it's like I, I don't. Do I tie flies because I need flies? I mean, I don't need any flies. I got more flies than I know what to do with, but I just love the process of making it. Yeah. I like that. I like the purple. Boy, that's a, you know, minus that one kind of bunk yellow one. I think these are just turning out fantastic. All right, so that's that's what we're going to call just kind of our standards. All right, I'm going to switch purples. We're going to do one, maybe two more. We'll call these like the bur bo bonus bonus flies. Let's see. Alright. Yeah, we'll just do 
one one more and then I'm gonna have to call it quits because my shoulders are just absolutely on fire in between the old in between the old shoulder blades tie until it hurts and then keep tying more All right, so this is basically the same as a pair, pair uh, wing post material, except this is just labeled as PIP. Parachute indicator post. It's basically the same, same stuff as the pair wing, but this stuff is bright pink. This is great for some high vis parachute post. We're going to use it for the shuck here. Same madness as before. We'll get our little tinsel in here. A little dab of wax and this is different than the purple pop. This is a little bit lighter. It's a lavender. I like this. This is almost like a... It almost feels just like this synthetic seal fur that we were using earlier. Especially after you kind of pick it out a little bit. But nothing, nothing is ever like the actual thing. Dabble dub. Work away. I need just a touch more. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of dubbing, yes. Yes. Run the rib forward, bada boom, bada bing. That's a fantastic thing. I like that. <laughs> All right, Allied, I'm going to do one more after this. <laughs> I like the pink. I really like the pink. I think that I think that's going to be our last little our last stand. We're gonna get, oh, that's why it's not fitting in there. Yeah. One more, that way I just got at least two of each. I got I have to do that, I can't just, 
walk away. Plus we got 13, 12 minutes. Want to make sure everybody gets their money's worth out of this live stream, you know what I mean? like the pink. We like it the pink. Hope us stick this all in. And a little dab of dub. This is that Fly Tires Dungeon Private Stash Leech Dub, he calls it. But as we're discovering, it's nice and buggy. Kinda acting like some seal fur. I like it. I forgot how much I love this pattern. It's such a, a blank canvas kind of fly. You know, it's just, you can just apply so much different variations to this, I suppose. You know, depending on your, your dubbing, depending on what you use for your little shucks. You know, imagination is your limitation when it comes to this kind of stuff. Waka Waka. There we are. I 
I think that was an evening well spent. I think so, I think so. All right. Hey, guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, be sure to join me next week. Uh, be sure to, uh, in the comments, in this video, between this week and next week, um, be sure to uh, leave me a uh, comment as to uh, what... What household items or junk we could um, use to tie a fly fly with? I'll put this back in here just so I got something for my, my outro. Um, yeah, so you go ahead and yeah, list some some household stuff. You know whether you know it's a piece of trash bag or a or a Dorito bag, or, you know, even even a candy bar, candy bar wrapper. Something that would be trash or, or otherwise, something you could find around the house, a common item that I might find around my house. Um, and then we'll see what we can do creatively. Creativity, create, creativity, create. Anyways, we'll see what we can do to uh, put something together. <laughs> I don't know. Um... Yeah, I got a new light set up, so my face seems different than last time. It's because I got a new lighting set up, or a different lighting setup. It's not really new, but man, what a fun night. Um, that's this week. We're going to do this again um, next week on the 24th, last week of February. Where is time gone? I don't know. Do my cats count? Yeah, why not? I don't have a dog. So, I mean, we, maybe we could do a little cat dubbing. Or I could hunt down a whisker. Ooh. I'll be on the lookout for some cat whiskers this, this week. They're always shedding whiskers. I don't know. But anyways, that's enough. Um, yeah. We'll go ahead and flip this over to here. Switch that over. I need to pop you up just a little bit. There we go. That's what we're talking about. Um, yeah, so thank you all for watching. Please, please stay healthy, everybody. Please be safe. Um, you know, it's getting kind of crazy out there weather wise. Just pretend you're from Minnesota. Um, you're driving in bad weather just do like i do close your eyes i don't know don't do that um but yeah happy time everybody and yeah sure you betcha tight lines peace